Welcome to the Eagle Valley Model Railroad. Today we're talking about trees. The cypress, the cedar, the pine tree, some of those types of trees. And basically this is what we're going to be making. So let's get going. To start off with we have some wire here. And I believe this is 22 gauge, it's like a tie wire. This is an electrical wire. It's a pretty stiff wire. Again, it's a 22 gauge. Picked it up at your local hardware store. Probably three dollars, three and a half dollars, or for a pretty good bit, 50 foot roll or more. Just cut you a length. Doesn't have to be specific. We're just generally making sizes of trees, probably anywhere from. 8 to 12 feet. I like to bend over one end of it so I my, so my pliers can get a good hold of them. I've got a screw placed into my table here and a one by fits just under it. Perfect. So I put that there and all I'm doing here is trying to straighten up my wire saw and I think that'll do us. So we're going to take one side of it and I've got a little slit put in my board here. I'm going to push that down into that slit to hold that piece of wire. And then pull this one out of the way. And that's basically my rig. What we have here is some 5 8 hemp rope. Uh, bought it from the hardware store as well. You can pull it off a reel. I bought a 10 foot piece of it for probably less than five dollars. Cut this into however wide you want your trees, inch, inch and a half, you know, strips. Basically with some pair of side cutters, lineman pliers, what do you want to call them? And it cuts pretty easy. Just pick you a size that you want and cut you a few of them. It doesn't take many to make one tree. So once you have these cut, what you'd like to do now is unbraid this stuff. And it's as simple as twisting it like that right there. Now what I like about this is it's it's actually a lot more. These pieces right here are are braided as well with three pieces. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So we take this and do this again, and it breaks it down even further. Now once you get this far down, these bundles, these bundles are not braided. So just set these to the side, we'll deal with these in just a second. Get you some pieces out that you can work with. And basically we're just breaking these apart. Unbraiding. See if I can do this twist it out and it comes into three pieces. And we're just taking these pieces out. Alright, so once we have a few of those ready, we'll just grab a bundle of it. And what I like to do is just bend it around a little bit, pinch it in the middle, spread out those fibers. And basically that's what you wind up with. And this is the easy part. Just lay that right there on your wire. Do you some more pieces? Just stack it up. And once you mess with this hemp rope just a little bit, you'll feel some places where the like right here. I've got a knot right there. And you can feel that when you start messing with it. And sometimes it takes a little bit of that's actually tied in a knot somehow. How about that? Cheap enough, just set that to the side. We'll deal with him after a while or throw him in the trash, either way. But what you want to do is just get these fibers separated enough to where when they when we spin this thing they'll spread out. And this don't have to be perfect, it can it don't have to be real thick, it can be 
as, as thick as you like it, as thin as you like it. If you want to do a brand new tree that's full of life and, and the leaves are and the limbs are real close together and tight, then so be it. If you want to do one that's at the end of its time and it's getting a little thinned out, then do that. Uh, variety is great. Uh, no two trees are alike. No two trees are the same height. And that's why I'm really not... I have a general idea about what a 8 to 12 foot tree looks like. Because I've done a few of these. So, we're just getting in the ballpark. We're not really... I'm not measuring it out. I don't want all my trees to be at the same same height because I don't, you know, real life's not that way. So get it close together. Bunch them up. Get them close. Again, it don't have to be perfect. It has to be how you want it. What I do now is I take our top wire and lay it over our bottom wire. Just put your finger there to hold it. Pull that out of the cut you put in your board. And I like to get my side cutters and grab that wire. Don't pull real tight, but make sure you got both wires in good. And then lift up and pull your board out of the way here. And this is a, this allows this fibers to spin free. And what you want to do is just pull back just a little bit and start putting some twists on this wire. And you'll see those fibers start spinning. And you can watch it and once you get to the the last bit of this to spin, you can turn loose of that and it'll stay just like that. Now what I like to do for ease, so I don't have to sit there all day long, is I take my electric drill and I'll slide this end of the wire into my drill. And then just using this hand chuck, We'll cinch that right down on that wire. And not pulling her back too much, but pulling back some. Pull back on your wire and pull the trigger. Now you may or may not be able to tell in the video, but as this thing twists, the wire starts, the, the overall length of the wire starts shrinking down. And it's just making those twists very tight. Um, Give it some resistance, don't give it too much, but give it some resistance as it's doing that and you'll wind up with a real, real nice tight tree here. Once it gets down to about where you want it, start pulling back a little bit harder and let the drill do the work. And there we go. And what that did was the tip here, see where you can't tell where I bent it over? tip here broke off into this and that's what we was wanting that's just fine so we'll come here with our clippers and just remove it from the screw and that's basically a rough looking fella you can take your scissors and this is where your artistic eye comes in you do what you want to with it you can skinny it up and make it flare out or you can Make it look like a Christmas tree, the perfect Christmas tree you've ever made. Or you can just start clipping away at it. And shape it. Again, it's not, this, this isn't a, the perfect tree. There is no perfect trees. It's the way they look to you. And if they look perfect to you, then that's, that's your perfect tree. So just go to shaping, and I ain't going to sit here and bore you to death with that, but just start shaping, and when you get ready, you'll wind up with something close to this. And all I've used to get them painted is I've got a hunter green, and then the camouflage green. So you can see some variations in the coloring. If that'll pick up on the camera. So we went with a, a darker green spraying upward. And then 
missed it a lighter green for new growth on the tips of these trees. For the trunks, we put, took a piece of 3 16 wooden dial and marked it up a little bit so it wasn't smooth. Took a hand drill and drilled the ends of them out on both ends. And then what's neat about this is when you get done with a tree, typically you have a pretty good bit of wire that's left over. And you don't need that much wire to place a tree. So usually I'll go about a three quarters of an inch to an inch and take me some clippers and clip that end off. And you end up with a piece of wire like this. And if you know a model railroader, they don't throw a thing away. Everything gets used or reused or used three times. So you just super glue it. Once you drill your hole, you super glue that piece into that end. And that gives you a way to mount your tree. And just as on the other side, that stem will go into there. Of course, we'll trim it up and make it fit better and make it push right up against the bottom of the tree. But that's basically what I do. And then, of course, you paint the trunk. And that's just a couple colors of brown with a little bit of a water to wash it. That way it's not completely solid brown. It's a little bit of transparency so the natural wood dial color will come through ever so slightly. And that's basically it. Now some of the guys will go a little a step further and once they've painted these well, excuse me, as they've painted these and it's drying, the paint's still wet, they'll drop this into a bucket of ground cover, fine or medium ground cover, color your desire, and shake it up and it'll put a leaf effect on, on the outsides of these things. We'll do that later on with some of them, but with these I wanted to, I was anxious and, and ready to get some green foliage on the layout. So this is what we're doing. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, share, subscribe, and until next time, happy modeling.